Welcome to Crafting on the Plains. My name is Jacintha and this is my channel where I talk about counter cross stitch as well as sometimes knitting, sewing, quilting, and whatever other crafty endeavors that I happen to get up to. So welcome if you are a new viewer and welcome back if you're a returning viewer. And at the very beginning of this episode, I want to say a massive, massive thank you there are officially a thousand of you, so that is a really exciting milestone to hit. I am so beyond grateful, and I will be having a little um, happy thousand subscribers thank you giveaway in this episode, so stay tuned for that. So thank you all so much for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're new or you've been watching me on and off, please consider doing so. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for, you know, just returning and subscribing and checking me out and for everyone that's, you know, shared my stuff. I really appreciate it. So, um, yes. So I have a, hopefully a little bit of a quick episode. I have had a very busy few weeks and I'm heading into a busy weekend, so I'm probably not going to show absolutely everything I worked on. I'm just going to show like the highlights, the things that have, you know, the most substantial progress. If I just touch something like one time, I'm not going to talk about it. And then I have a little bit of haul, a little uh, bit of plans, and I also have a quilt to show you that I just picked up today. So really excited. So I'm going to just jump right into it. And I have a finish. So this was a whip last time, um, or I guess it was a new start last time, but it is the Autumn Harvest Pretzel by Mill Hill. So here it is. It's done. It's got all of its beads and everything on it. It's a perforated paper kit and it has a little treasure as well. It has a little heart treasure. I love it. This is so cute. This was stitched. I started this at the quilting or the quilting, the stitching bee retreat with my, um, one of my new friends, Brie, um, and she has already finished hers. So I'm really excited. I think I'm going to fully finish it into a magnet. It comes with a magnet. And so I think I'm going to fully finish it into the magnet. I just need to make a day to fully finish a lot of things. So that is my finish. I'm so excited about it. I love it. And I am definitely very interested in the perforated paper kits. I think that especially if you have like issues sometimes seeing your stitches, um, they can be a really great respite for your eyes. They can be great travel projects. So I am absolutely going to be picking up a few more perforated paper kits in the very near future. So if you have recommendations for your favorite uh, Mill Hill or other perforated paper kits, please leave them below because I'm really looking to be enabled for some stashing. Okay, so my next thing is I'm just going to hop into my whips. So my first whip is one that I was, this is in no particular order, but I was working on this today because the second half of season three of Bridgerton dropped um, earlier this week. And so this is my Bridgerton stitch I guess um so this is from the blue flower it is hedgehog and hyacinth and here is my progress I think the last time I showed it to you all I had was a couple flowers so I've done the whole stem I'm hoping that's showing up well um I have got the whole stem and I got the leaf and so I just need to do the rest of the flowers and hedgehog. This is a pretty uh, quick project and I am stitching it two over two on 36 count fox and rabbit oyster shell, which is a beautiful, I think it's at least on my monitor, it's coming up gray, but it's a purplish gray. I love it. And I did do a full, um, well, not a full conversion, but a conversion for the called for fancy floss because it has a cottage garden threads silk pack that you could get with this but I did not I wasn't able to get it before it sold out so I did switch out my fancy flosses if you're interested in what those are I listed them in my last video or please just contact me 
and I would be happy to send you what I'm using instead. Okay. So I am going to try to not talk super fast. So if I do, I apologize. Like I said, I'm headed into a busy weekend. And so I have a little slice of time to record, but I did want to get on and, you know, do my exciting 1000 subscriber video and do my giveaway. And before, because the next time I would be able to record would be like, yeah, one or two weeks from now. And I didn't want to wait that long. So, okay. My next one that I have been working on is for the year of the dragon stitch along. And I am working on the pattern is called something generic and it's from author embroidery design on Etsy. And this isn't a hoop because I work on this quite a bit and I didn't want to pull it out of the hoop, but this is my dragon. This is my progress and I have been working on the wings. So down here is like the tail, but if you've, if you're a returning viewer, you've already seen the tail, but the wings is the part that I have been really working on and they are gorgeous. They're gorgeous. I think I'm about a little over 60% done at this point, maybe 65%. I'm not sure. Um, but I'm over 60% done with the cross stitches. Now the back stitches, because I'm on pattern keeper, pattern keeper does not do back stitches. So I've not, I've done some of the back stitching as you can see in like the body and the tail, the tail is fully back stitched, but I do need to do the rest of the back stitching and I'm working on the wings. I think I'm going to finish this wing and then I'm going to move on to the bigger wing over here. It looks so good. It looks so, so, so good. Okay. The next thing I've been working on, I've been working on quite a bit. This has sort of been my focus project the last couple weeks. And that is my real comfort by Modern Folk Embroidery. I think I didn't mention my dragon is on 36 count Winter Moon by Zweigart and I'm stitching it two over two. I almost always stitch my 36 count two over two. So just assume it's the case unless I tell you otherwise. But this is real comfort. I'm modifying this chart in a couple ways. Number one, I'm chopping off the bottom alphabet because I just don't think it needs it. And obviously my fabric was not big enough to stitch the alphabet. So I've had the saying and the like top wreath thing finished for a while, but the work, the houses and like whatever other buildings these are is what I have been working on the last couple weeks and they are really, really coming along. I've got one more house to do and then I need to finish the border. And I finally got around to charting because I changed it. It was 1817, which was her birth year to like 2017 or 20. So it was like a centennial. I don't know. It was some type of anniversary of, I think her death year. Um, I wanted to do her birth year and her death year, Jane Austen's birth year and death year. So I recharted her death year to put over here. I haven't stitched it yet, but I've recharted it. So I love this. I love it. And I am stitching this on a 32 count from a dyer that I don't think exists anymore, sadly, but it is with DMC variegated floss. I don't know how well that's coming up. My lighting is really weird today. I think I have too much lighting actually because it's very, very sunny outside and I have my other lights. So I apologize if the lighting is not great, but it is a purple blue variegated DMC. All right. And my needle minder is from Nessa's needle minders. It's so beautiful. My next project I have been working on, I actually pulled out and spent a good like afternoon, evening, day on my full coverage cross stitch. So I just felt like I had not been working on this project and it's cause I haven't been, I, I don't know. I started it last year and I just 
was so motivated to work on my full coverage. It was like the only thing I wanted to work on. I got to 25% pretty easily. And so I thought, okay, I'll do another 25% this year. No, I've done like 5% <laughs> this year. And part of it is the, um, the page I'm working on is super confetti. So here we are. My hoop is in there for some reason. Um, you can see all my crazy parked threads. But here we are. And the part I've been working on is this page right here. And this is Heaven of Designs. It's Mini Ravenkin. Sadly, this artist is no longer on Heaven Earth Designs. So you cannot get this chart anymore. I'm so sorry. And I am personally devastated because there was like three other pieces that were designed by this um, artist that I also wanted to stitch, but I didn't buy them because I was like, I don't need to buy a whole bunch of full coverages. I'll just buy them one at a time mistake because now I can never get them. So sad days. Um, but this is mini Ravenkin and I will pop a picture somewhere on the screen so you can kind of see what I'm doing. But I just realized, okay, you know what? I'm tired of doing this confetti all along here. It's driving me crazy. I, I need to work on like some blocks of color to get some, to get some good like stitches done to get some good stitches in. And so I was able to figure out a way to count over to this black area, this area of 310. And this I'm pretty sure is actually a raven because I don't know if you can tell, but this is like there's ravens and then this is like the moon here behind her head. Where am I? Right there. That's the moon. And then if you kind of look here, you can see it's sort of a hairline. No, probably hard with the hoop, but this is actually sort of like a raven that's like sitting, I don't know if it's sitting on her shoulder or sitting on her hand. And so I, I jumped over and I started stitching this big area of 310. And that was so much fun to just do 310 just because all of this, all of this has been confetti and it's been very difficult. So I'm getting some progress in on this. I'm trying to force myself to like once a month, pull it out and put like a good afternoon into it on a weekend. And I'm not going to get to 25 more. So I wanted to get to the 50% mark this year. I'm not going to do that, but I am hoping that I can just get maybe this page done. I'm not really sure. I don't know. I want to, like to make some real progress on this. So next year, this is going to go on my WIPCO board because I did not put this on my WIPCO board last year, or I didn't put it on it for this year because I thought I'm not going to need motivation to work on it. I'm going to be pulling it out like every weekend. And that just wasn't the case. It's not been the case. I've not worked on it as much as I should have. So this is going to be on the WIPCO board next year. And I'm going to try to get maybe at least this page done this year. That'd be a good a decent, decent goal. I am stitching this with a call for DMC. I'm stitching it on a 25 count even weave and I'm stitching it two over one tent stitch. I love doing it tent stitch. I cannot imagine doing a full coverage any other way. Okay. I need to make a mental note to myself to pull this out of the hoop at some point. Because apparently I forgot about it. Okay. My last whip that I'm going to show you is another stitch along and this is the botanical study sal that is being hosted by paper crane yarns and handmade by Sarah W here on YouTube she is a wonderful friend of mine wonderful foster friend of mine and she put together along with her friend from paper crane yarns this stitch along so here is the chart it's gorgeous it is by Petal Pusher and I am stitching it on a 32 count. I think this colorway is NYX by Under the Sea Fabrics. So this is my progress. I've done, I feel like quite a bit since the last time you saw this. So here I am 
and I did my own conversion. So, but I am still in the process of tweaking that conversion. So it's not listed anywhere yet, but if you're interested in the colors I'm using, please just reach out to me. I'm happy to give them to you. So I completed these leaves. I already had one done, finished the other one. I did another one of the flowers. I did this leaf over here. I finished these leaves down here. This is where this project, because I'm doing a conversion, this color right here is a different floss from this one right here. You can't tell when it's stitched. You can't tell. It looks like the same one, which is frustrating because they look different on the skein. I don't think they look as different as I thought they were, but they look different on the skein. So I'm going to hold them up. So one of them is classic color shamrock. And the other one is gentle art tropical ocean. So tropical ocean is a bit lighter and it's actually lighter in person than it is coming up on the screen. It kind of looks the same here. I used these two in a different project together. Um, I did the autumn alphabet and I used these two for a different project. See, you can kind of see now they're different colors and they looked like completely different colors against that fabric. Against this fabric, they look the same. They don't look so much the same that I actually had to rip out a substantial amount of these leaves because I started stitching halfway through a leaf. I picked up the wrong color and it was very clear to tell that they were not the same color when I stitched them exactly side by side and I had to rip out a bunch of my stitching. But for some reason, when they're right next to each other like that, you can hardly tell that they're different shades. So I think I'm going to have to rip out these flowers and I'm going to do more of like a very pale, like baby blue, and that will be more obvious. So that is the drawback of doing your own conversion is sometimes things just don't stitch up the way that you think they will when you're like doing your floss toss. So it is what it is. So I'm, I'm going to be using, so shamrock is the color of the larger leaf. And then this one was the tropical ocean and I'm going to pull that out. And I think I have another, I have a couple options I'm playing around with. So hopefully I can report back next time as to what I have switched it out with. Um, but that has kind of made it hard to work on this project because every time I look at it, I think, Oh, I need to rip that out. And then I'm not happy. So I just need to, I need to get over it. Okay. I have, I'm going to do just a tiny bit of haul and then I'm going to talk about my giveaway. So actually let's do, let's do plans first. Okay. So my main plan that I'm going to be starting this weekend is this gorgeous chart. I'm hoping it's not too much glitter. Here it is, Dimensions Gold Collection, Wind Moon Fairy. I'm so excited. My sister bought this for me for Christmas and I posted about it. And um, Caroline from Caroline's Cross Stitch Corner reached out to me We and was like, I have that one, let's start it. So we're gonna be starting it on the 16th, June 15th, okay. Glad I checked. Yes, June 15th, which for me is tomorrow. So I'm recording this on June 14th. So tomorrow, me and um, Caroline will be starting this. And we are going to be using the hashtag Dimensions Fairy Sal. Dimensions Fairy Sal. And I'll put that on the somewhere on the screen so you can read it as well. So if you are going to be stitching any Dimensions Fairies or you want to start a Dimensions Fairy or whatever with us, then you can use the hashtag on Instagram as well. I have never stitched a dimensions kit in my life and I'm so, so excited to try. So I'm, I'm so happy. It's got all of the stuff. I'm going to be using the called for Ada because this is, I think it's full coverage. Um, so I don't care. It'll be nice. And, um, yeah, I've got some like stuff upcoming where I think I'm going to be happy to be stitching on some Ada. So 
very excited. So we're starting this on June 15th, which is like International Wednesday or so, like not Wednesday, like the day of the week, but International like Wind Day. So we thought Wind Moon Fairy, sure. But we're, we made the hashtag, um, Caroline decided on the hashtag that it would be Dimensions Fairy Sal. And that way it would cover any Dimensions Fairy that somebody would be doing. I am going to talk giveaway. So I actually was trying to put together like a physical giveaway prize for this video. And I was in the process of making a project bag, ran out of my fusible fleece and decided to order some and it's lost somewhere in the mail. Um, and I've had just some, I don't know, I've had just everything I've tried to set up for this giveaway, something weird has happened, like things I've ordered have gotten lost in the mail, um, whatever. So I just decided, okay, you know what? We're gonna make it real simple and I'm gonna do a $20 Etsy gift card because I love Etsy I love buying cross stitch supplies and patterns off of Etsy so we're gonna do a $20 Etsy gift card and that way I can send it to you wherever you are and you can buy PDFs if you're international you don't pay for shipping whatever right um, so because I did want I wanted to do something to say thank you as soon as I could. So I actually have my floss anniversary coming up here in about a month. So I'm hoping that in about a month, all of the stuff that I had tried to put together for this giveaway will actually come together and I can do a bigger physical giveaway. But for this one, I didn't want to miss saying thank you as soon as I could. So it's going to be a $20 digital Etsy gift card. So what I would for like you like for you to do is down below if you could comment like your favorite digital like pdf or digital pattern designers like people who do pdf patterns who are your favorites because i love to stitch off of pdfs um i love to do them in pattern keeper i love pdfs um even if i have to print them at least like i can mark all over it i don't be worried um i can save them reprint them later or whatever. So let me know. They don't have to be on Etsy, um, but let me know who your favorite designers are that do digital patterns. And then I will next video in a couple weeks, draw a winner. And then you'll just give me your email and then I can uh, send you the gift card. So um, yes, you don't have to use it on digital patterns. You can use it on whatever you want, but I'm very interested to know who are your favorite digital pattern designers and so I will draw from that. So please post that down below. Please don't use the word giveaway or free or win or any of those other things because, you know, then that attracts people. Um, also, um, please be over 18 um, so that you can give me your personal info. Uh, but other than that, yeah. And I would really love it if you were a subscriber and liked the video as well because I'm trying to say thank you to my subscribers. So, all right, so that's my giveaway. The next thing I'm going to do is talk about a little bit of haul and then I'm going to show my quilt. So, okay. I have a couple of things I purchased. A couple of the things I'm not going to show because they're real boring. It's just like a bunch of random flosses that I need for some projects I'm kidding up. Uh, but I did get two things that I'm really excited about. So the first thing is I bought a kit. I have been watching this, um, her channel, her name is Katie and I think it's Red Stitchery. And she stitches largely kits and her kits are beautiful. And I'm very interested in kit stitching because it just is appealing to just have everything ready to go and just grab it and like start. And so I was just looking for some kits and I found this one. It's from Design Works and it's a hedgehog. And I don't even know if it has a name. Oh, it's just called Hedgehog. Okay, there we go. All right. So <laughs> this is Hedgehog by Design Works. And I bought this off Amazon. Uh, and I was just happened to be browsing Amazon to see what patterns or, or kits were available. And this one was on, you know, they have flash sales. This happened to be on a flash sale. So I picked it up for like $7. So not too shabby, I feel like. Um, it's eight inches. It comes with a hoop. It comes with Ada and the floss. This linen does not come with it. 
This is a linen that I shoved in here because I don't want to stitch it on the white Ada just because there's so much background showing. So I'm going to switch it out to a linen and I thought I might switch it out to this linen. I don't even remember where this linen is. It's a Vibrona win. So I'm not sure. I might, I might not stitch on this linen. I might find a different one. But I definitely i am going to stitch this on a linen. But I'm going to use all of the provided flosses and everything. Um, I probably won't use the provided hoop because it's one of these like kind of cheap splintery wood ones. Um, but they might finish it in the hoop. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm very excited. I thought that this would be something good to just like grab and start if I was just like really feeling a new start but didn't want to have to bother kidding something up. And I love hedgehogs, so love it. And then the other thing I got that is an actual exciting piece of haul is I was on one, two, three stitch because I was just missing a few random flosses for some projects that I've been kidding up. And they were actually having a sale on some Nora Corbett patterns. And I don't know if this is just me, but I feel like I never see sales on Nora Corbett patterns. And it was like a lot of the like witches and pixies type of things. And so I saw this one and this one is Eva and this is a Bewitching Pixies by Nora Corbett. And I think she's beautiful. She's different than the other pixies because the, the rest of the Bewitching Pixies are kind of like standing up and she's riding on a broom. And I like that she's kind of in profile because some of their faces I'm not in love with. So I thought that was kind of simpler. And um, if my camera will focus. So really happy about this one. Have no idea when I'm going to start it. I have no idea, but I've seen a lot of people. I've been watching a lot of Amira May videos the last, last month. And a lot of people were saying, you know, you never know when Nora and Mira patterns are going to go out of print. And so if you see one that you love for a price that you're willing to pay, go ahead and grab it because if it goes out of print, it goes out of print. So I thought, you know what, this is one that I could really, really, I really is on my to stitch list, is on my wish list. So it was on sale. So I figured go ahead, pick, pick it up and that way I'll have it. I don't stash a lot of patterns, but there's some of them that, you know, I just don't want to risk them going out of print. Okay. My last bit of haul was actually a gift and it's, it's crafts, but it's a completed craft and it was given to me by one of my students. Um, I don't know if she watches my floss tube. I don't know if she knew that I was going to show this. Um, so I'm not going to say her name because I don't know that she'll want me to. But one of my students just graduated and she was my student worker. She took a lot of my classes. We became really, really close during the time she was in college and she's headed off to law school. And so she made me a gift as kind of like, um, you know, appreciation or whatever. So she made me this. She crochets and she's so good at it. It's so pretty. This is a little, oh, I guess like wall hanging or you could use it as like a little mat, but it is, I think she, I don't know if she designed it herself. I think she did. It's Persuasion by Jane Austen. And another thing is that her and I, um, I don't know how we end up having this conversation. Um, I think we were on a trip, a school trip, and we were at a bookstore and we discovered that both of us, our favorite Jane Austen is Persuasion. And not a lot of people have their favorite Jane Austen as Persuasion. And both of us love Persuasion the most. So we're both Austen fans. We both love Persuasion. And so she made this for me. And it's so beautiful. And then look, look at, look at this. She did this like leaf border. I am an atrocious crocheter. I'm so, it's, I struggle so much. So I'm so impressed by this. It's beautiful. The work she put into it. Oh my goodness. And then she like did embroidery stitches for the words and everything. And she did like, this is all color work embroidery. I don't even know. I don't know how to do color embroidery. So I'm so impressed. It's beautiful. I've had it kind of just like sitting up here, which is not the place it needs to go um, so that I can look at it. Uh, but I'm definitely, I need to figure out like a really good spot for it because it's so pretty. So I wanted to share this. It's not a craft that's made by me, but it is a craft that I now own and I am so happy. I'm going to treasure it forever. So that is 
all of my crafting. I do have some knitting, but I'm not going to show it because I am tight on time. But I am going to show this because I'm so excited about it. So this is a quilt. I picked this up from my quilter, my long arm quilter, I'm calling her mine. This is the first time I've used her, but I love her. It is Gina's Quilting Studio. If you are in like central-ish, eastern part of central Oklahoma or central part of eastern Oklahoma, I don't know how you categorize it, um, check out Gina's Quilting Studio and um, I'll try to link her website below. But she's a long armor and I'm so impressed. She got this done so quickly. Her customer service was fabulous. I put in a little request on her website at like 11 o'clock at night and by I think 8 a.m. the next morning she had responded to me and was like bring in your quilt I'm ready so and she also ships right she you can ship it to her ship it back and forth it does not have to be local but because she's like 20 minutes ish from where I live it turned out to be perfect um I had another long armor that I worked with when I lived in Oklahoma City that I really loved but I did not really want to drive an hour to get things long armed so this is really nice um okay so i'm gonna see if there's a good way to show this so this is a sampler quilt that was supposed to be much much bigger but i kind of failed at it so this is a these are blocks that are from i'm gonna just show parts of it as i go so here's the first block here's the next one these are blocks that are from Barbara Brockman's Civil War, like, sampler quilt book. And I, my library has the book, so, and there's the other one. So it's from Barbara Brockman's Civil War sampler quilt book. And my plan was that I wanted to do this, like, sampler quilt, and I was going to do, like, nine or twelve blocks, and I was going to do a block a month, and it was going to be great. And I've been working on this quilt for like two and a half years and I looked the other day and I had four blocks completed and I thought this is depressing. And I think that sampler quilts are just not for me at this point in my life. I thought that sampler quilts would be easier for me to do because I kind of thought, okay, I'll like have a little win, like just focus on one block at a time, but not being able to do like the kind of assembly line quick piecing has definitely made working on sampler quilts very difficult for me. And I actually have another sampler quilt that is in a similar situation that I need to figure out something to do with. But so I realized that I had four blocks and these are not, these are not Civil War reproduction fabrics. They're not, okay, just FYI. Um, I know that. These are random fabrics that I either found at Joann's or had in my stash that I thought kind of like fit the Civil War reproduction aesthetic-ish. I was getting into that style of quilt and that style of fabric by watching Olivia Pumpkin Hollow quilts, gorgeous quilts she has, and gorgeous cross stitch. But I didn't want to invest the money into buying a bunch of Civil War reproduction fabric because it can be a little bit difficult to find and it can be expensive. Um, until I knew I sort of liked that style. And I also started this quilt right before I moved. And so I just thought, okay, I'm just going to grab whatever scraps I have that kind of fit that theme, grab a few like little fat quarters or whatever from Joann's and just kind of play around and make a little sampler quilt with that style of blocks. And then maybe eventually I'll buy some like actual Civil War reproduction fabrics. And again, I ended up making four blocks over the course of like three years. So didn't go great. Um, so I just decided enough is enough. I'm throwing in the towel. And rather than just let the blocks languish, I said, I'm going to find a setting for them. And I'm going to turn them into a quilt. So this is quite a small quilt. It's basically what I did is I set them on point, obviously. And because that is a good way to get more space out of less blocks. So if you have a quilt, you only have a few blocks, setting them on point is great. I've never set anything on point before and it was not as scary as I thought it was gonna be. It was pretty 
once you figure out the math, which there are charts on the internet that do that for you, because I'm not doing math myself. Um, once you figure out the math, it's pretty easy. So I just set them on point and then I did like a nice thick, this is like a four inch ish border and I backed it with the same fabric that's here. So that way it would be really easy to pick up thread um, to quilt it with. And then all I need to do is trim this and bind it. So it ended up being like 43 by 43, I think. So it's like a little bit bigger than a wall hanging, but a little bit smaller than a lap quilt. But I think it'll be fine just to like throw over the back of the couch. It's kind of like Americana colors, you know, especially like some of these blocks with the, yeah, it's kind of Americana ish colors. Um, and so I thought it'd be kind of good to be like summery 4th of July and, um, you know, it'd be good, something good to just like throw out on the floor when me and my daughter, or sometimes we just sit on the floor together and like do coloring or whatever other things, um, play cards or whatever. And so, uh, it'd be just nice to like throw onto the floor to sit on or just have a little bit under the, like on the couch, just have a little bit of something on my lap. But I really just wanted to get it done so it was not making me feel guilty for sitting in my, like, half-completed craft bin stash. So it's so much closer to being done. I love it. I'm so happy with it. Would I have loved to be able to show you guys this, like, massive, like, 12-block sampler quilt? Yes. But sometimes you just do the best you can. And... A completed quilt is better than a box of quilt blocks. So here we are. Very happy. Okay. That is basically all that I have for you. I hope that you have a great few weeks. And please, again, consider liking and subscribing. And I hope you get lots of crafting time. I'll see you in the next video.